Hi, uh, this is Roman Jacquez from TheArtCoders.com and in this second video of a series of videos dealing with how to communicate between WCF and a Windows Phone 7 uh, device, uh, we're going to uh, create the UI that actually, or the project that consumes a WCF service that has been created, particularly for this application. In the previous video, we created a WCF project in which we created uh, some data contracts and a service contract that exposes some operations that are required by this application to interact with it. So we created a service called Banking Transaction, and I can just do a little recap by right clicking on this and saying View in Browser. We we see this service exposed um, and the whistle and the whistle generated, so we can actually tap into this resource from a Windows Phone 7 application, consume this information, send data, whatever you want to do, uh, or whatever this you know this, this WCF service allows us to do. So once the service has been created, uh, now it's time to consume it on the other end. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this real quick. This is just uh, again remember this is just the uh, Windows Phone 7 application has been created. So now from the application itself you need to add a reference to this uh, WCF service that is exposed and you're gonna uh, and you're gonna access all its operations through a proxy class that gets generated automatically for you. How do you do this? Well in the project, in the Windows Phone 7 project in the reference folder you can right click and, and say add service reference you hit discover and then you're gonna find all the services that are available within this machine that are currently running in this case the service that is running is banking transaction you can expose it you can actually collapse it just to make sure uh, that everything is in order and you're gonna get two uh, you're gonna get these two operations which are the ones that we define just to make sure that everything is working fine what do you do now? You sell, you create a namespace for it from which you're going to access the proxy client that will be generated. So in this case, I'm going to call it banking service. In advanced, I can I can make some changes here. I can, you know, make sure that always generate asynchronous operations. I can also change the collection type. For example, let's say if I want to st if I want to make this service, or I want uh, if, I, if I want to receive the information in a more uh, generic way rather than uh, uh, more specific to the .NET framework, instead of an observable collection, which is a collection uh, that uh, provides notification when items are added or removed, I can just say that a system array. For example, I can just want to receive the information as an array. Whatever you want to do, you can do uh, those changes here. I'm just going to click OK and OK again just to make sure that everything gets created. We, you might get some warnings but uh, you can overlook these as long as the you don't get any errors everything is fine it just says something about the custom uh, tool warning uh, but in this case you can you can see that actually the application got generated fine um, okay now the next step is just to make sure that the again that the proxy is working and I'm able to access it so in the code behind of the main page .xaml, I'm gonna go back over here and I'm going to create a private instance of this um, of, of this uh, banking service. So I can create it as a read-only uh, property, um, or, uh, as a read-only field, or or uh, whatever. I'm gonna call I'm gonna say banking service, banking transaction service client, which is the the proxy class that gets generated from your service. So you uh, is usually the name of the service plus the uh, suffix client. So the service is banking transaction service and the word client. So it's banking transaction service client. I'm going to call this proxy. I'm going to instantiate this proxy within my constructor. So I'm going to say proxy new uh, banking service transaction service client. After I have instantiated, I need to handle the proper uh, events and uh, any synchronous operations. Remember that Serverlight handles uh, its operations in any synchronous fashion. The same. Uh, so then, when it communicates with WCF, it does it asynchronously. So it puts uh, it, pu it 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 puts an asynchronous operation. It invokes an asynchronous operation, and um, that the the whole operation happens asynchronously. So you need to handle uh, when the when the response comes back. Since it doesn't come right away, you you can just you know uh, execute the application, perform something else while the application uh, while the ex uh, while the process while the the asynchronous operation is being processed, and then you can receive it. 
so then in this case you need to handle both uh, operations uh, in in this case since we're using the uh, since WCF generates and creates uh, and uses the asynchronous model you need to have a, a like a begin and end, uh, completed, on on completed, uh, like you know the, whatever the synchronous model creates for you. So in this case, we're going to handle the completed events of the two operations that we have available. In this case, we have get account info completed. And I'm just going to generate uh, you know the the fold uh, event handler that it creates for me. The same way for the deposit funds completed, and it just creates that for me. Uh, I could just make this private or whatever you want to do. Okay, so then once you have these, now you need to uh, invoke the asynchronous operation. Now that you know how uh, these are, these uh, this uh, these asynchronous operations will be handled, and you will reach you will get something as a return. So now you need to invoke that. How do we do that? We're going to create a simple UI that will simulate uh, kind of like a little form that the user uh, will 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 be able to um, provide information uh, the, the, the user will be able to provide information to the service um, like as a username and password and then it's, it's gonna get the information uh, that, that it needs so I'm just gonna paste uh, some simple simple code in here I'm just gonna replace whatever I have here and I'm just gonna paste this a uh, little bit of code um, what I just created right now, I just pasted a grid which con which contains uh, two rows. The top row contains this whole form. The bottom row doesn't have anything yet, which I will I will uh, go come back to this later. But at least uh, let's concentrate on this top grid over here. This grid has two columns, two and three rows. The top two rows contain uh, username uh, and password text blocks and two text boxes mm, that we will use in order to provide input. Um, the Get Bank Account Info button, uh, whenever we get the info uh, required by the user, when you hit, when you hit Get Bank Account Info, is going to call the asynchronous operation called uh, Get Account Info with the information required and will re have something in return. What? a bank account info or just the bank account in, in, in our case. So how do we do? Uh, we can just handle the clicking event of the get, a, the, be, the get bank account info button. I'll just double click on it and once I'm here I can invoke the asynchronous operation by saying proxy dot get account info async which requires two parameters a username and a password so we're going to use those text boxes that we have on our UI this one is called uh, txt username so I'm going to pull the text out of that and I'm going to say txt password and I'm going to pull the password property from it once I have once I've uh, uh, provided the information to the asynchronous operation now it's just a matter of knowing what we're going to receive on the other end so why don't we just create a you know simple local variable here and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pull whatever we got out of the result uh, out of the result property of the asynchronous operation so why don't we place a breakpoint here I can place a breakpoint here and one here and let's try you know how this how this goes we're going to use the emulator because we we have this Windows Phone 7 application and we're gonna use the emulator to provide the input and uh, get the information required um, so for now we're gonna uh, launch the emulator and while that launches um, I just wanted to uh, do a little bit of recap again the the emulator is uh, is rebooting what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide the input through that form we're gonna provide the username and password remember that is not being applied or acted upon on the service side after we've provided the username and password on this simple form, we're going to invoke the get bank account, the get account info uh, asynchronous operation by passing this information. Then remember, this operation returns a bank account object which we can consume on the UI. Uh, that way you can simulate that like you, the user has been authenticated and that you can get information back. So um, let's just wait until the 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 emulator uh, finishes loading, and then we should be able to have uh, it should deploy the application into the Windows Phone. Um, again, we're we're just going to be using some 
you know some fake information there's no validation on the other end we're just gonna you know check how 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 it does it okay the application has been deployed and we have a little form that uh, the little form that we created so I'm gonna provide in the username I'm just gonna provide I'll say Roman and for the password whatever I'm just gonna type some bogus password and when I click on get bank account info we are expected to make the asynchronous call let's go back over here we have Roman we have uh, the password whatever the password was and I'm going to hit at five so I can hit the other breakpoint and that will simulate and that will actually go to the service perform that operation on that and come back and re return to me like the banking info so is calling the service now when we get as a result what do we get we get a bank account object the bank account object got created on the service and got re in, in, in returned back to us we have the bank account number we have the balance and we have this information we still don't know what to uh, you know what are we gonna do here uh, okay so we just get the information and everything is fine so that's how you let's say how you make the call and then you get the information required okay so I'm just gonna stop here and since we we know exactly how we're how we're gonna get it now let's see how we can consume that information that got received in the next video I'm going to show how to consume the information received from the service into the Windows Phone 7 application so please refer to the third video of this series uh, in this tutorial thank you very much